Hey, this is Matt Connors. I'm picking up where I left off. I had this image of a robot that I had edited in, I'm now editing in Sketchbook Pro, but I had started out, I did this in Stable Diffusion. It was based on a, a prompt that I wrote about a robot in a uh, post-apocalyptic city and kind of a, a heap of junk around him, something to that effect. That's not that important right now. I can, uh, I can put the prompt information in, in the details. But once I had the image in Stable Diffusion and then I brought it into Photoshop and I had used the beta version of Photoshop to make extensions and I'm just going to back up for a second to show a little bit of, of what that entailed but I have it in the previous video so I tend to be pretty I try to be as organized as I can about my layers so I'm going to turn this off for a second and go back so the area inside the green is what Stable Diffusion first gave me and when I got it into Photoshop the first thing I did was I extended the canvas because I wanted to make sure that we could finish the area of the arm over here and give the character a little bit more room first of all on the top to be able to potentially add a head and then I just felt like the framing was a little bit tight in the original Stable Diffusion so this worked pretty well to go into Photoshop and use generative fill to extend the edges and one of the reasons why I really like this is is it uh, adds content into the image so it gives you more room over here on this right hand side with more of the buildings left hand side the same thing it actually created these new clouds which is a nice little benefit and I've talked about this before one thing about the generative fill within Photoshop I know it's still a work in progress because they're still kind of building out the Adobe Firefly prompt engine and also how it would work within Photoshop, but it ends up being a little bit soft. So I, I had already added a bit of sharpness to it in Photoshop, but you'll see that there's a difference between the line quality on the edges of this building here, and then on the building that was extended via Photoshop and generative fill. Even if you look at the area right on the edge of the image, it was pretty crisp in the original, and it's starting to look a little bit soft. Now for this particular image, I don't really mind, because I'd like the focus to be on the center of the image anyway and I may be, when the image is complete, applying a little bit of a blur in the foreground um, to make sure that we're focused on, on this robot who's the center of the picture, center of attention. And one reason why I, I tend to do these paint overs, yeah, Stable Diffusion gives you a pretty nice image to start with, but uh, I always find that I'm looking for the image to tell a story and even though you're you're in many of the the prompts you can give a subject and an action and an object so robot standing in city let's say with junk around him these are details that that now created this image but I wanted to look, be a little bit more specific I wanted to tell more of a story so the intent was to have this robot kind of looking up what is he looking at who knows but um, so what I did here was once I had the image, I started painting out some of the areas where I felt like it was a bit distracting. I'm just going to turn off this layer for a second and this layer for a second. So there's a bit of paint that I think I need to erase, like some of this paint and shadows that I added. But in some cases, I used the paint layer to remove little chunks that I felt like were distracting down here. By, I guess what would be his crotch and then I wanted to give the, the area around this it's not finished yet I need to paint further down into the background but uh, I felt like it needed to give a little room to recognize the hand uh, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and show you how I might do this with um, whoop, let me rotate it back this way so sketchbook and uh, one of the reasons why I like it is very immediate you can get right into the tools very quickly. It uses that radial menu in a lot of cases to control whether it's a layer function. Like see, it's got the radial menu in here. I really like that kind of paradigm. But anyway, I'm going to go to this paint. I added an extra layer. What I tend to do is I merge down. Now, when you're working within uh, Sketchbook Pro, I tend to use a lot of the same brushes. So I really favor this artist set and I may have already described this that I like to use the conceptual brushes 
and for some reason it's not showing me my favorite. Uh, oh, there we go, conceptual two. I think I had it a little bit smaller than, than it was before, so I was missing the brush that I wanted. So my intent here is to kind of extend right in this section. So I'm just gonna eyedropper and then just start painting. Sure, I could do this with fill, but if I'm just using eyedropper and going in, it's a more organic sense that I'm picking up the pink color and then it allows me to, to vary the color just a little bit. And I am using a XP Pen Pro. Just gonna show that for a second here. Whoops, back out and back in again. So the XP Pen Pro, sorry for the odd rotation. It's a tablet screen. And so with a tablet screen, I find that I can get much more immediately into the edit itself because I am painting directly on the screen. Now the Wacom tablets are what I used to use, but um, they're kind of expensive. I love them, but they're pretty expensive. And so I thought I would experiment with uh, some of the other tablets. I've been using Wacom tablets either as a, um, a separate device that lives on your desktop or the Cintiqs for, oh, I don't know, almost 20 years. And um, I love the pressure sensitivity. I love that you can just get right in there and start drawing on the edits. I find that it's less stressful on my hand if I'm not using a mouse and trying to crunch down and I can just get more into the details. Now lots of people have shifted over the past maybe 10 years or so to using iPads for this sort of thing. And I agree, I like the iPad. I've been using the iPad for a long time, especially uh, you know, starting with brushes, but then Procreate and even Sketchbook has an iPad version but um, I found myself gravitating more back to the tablet screen. I found it was a much more natural interface to work from. So in this way, I can just start to paint out some of these areas. And, and this is still gonna be cloud. And I want it to stretch all the way to the edge here. And then what I can do is afterwards, I can start to draw the lines. I'm gonna shift back to uh, the smaller conceptual brush. And of course, you can modify these as much as you want. I tend to leave the brush menus kind of open and overlapping, and then I can change the size if I want to, like that. Um, and it is gonna recognize the opacity where it ties the opacity to the pressure of, of how I'm pushing on the tablet itself. So I kinda of like that. I remove that section pretty quickly and easily. And it, you know, it does have a, a natural kind of color shift here. It's pretty subtle. Uh, I might wanna add a little bit more of this lighter color just along the edge to create a little bit more contrast. And I'm going to switch back to that bigger brush just a little bit. That doesn't seem like a big edit, but uh, you make a lot of these kind of edits and it starts to feel a little bit more natural. I think I'm going to add a bit of that color over here as well. And maybe I'll kind of paint a little bit of a cloud, an extension. I'll create an edge on the top of that. And it allows me to get rid of some of that extra debris that I don't know exactly what was going on with that. It's, uh, you try and get into this weird mindset where you're trying to figure out what was the AI thinking, but it doesn't work that way. Of course, it doesn't think. It's just using data to try and create an image. And oftentimes the light is a bit scattered in the, it's scattered. By scattered, I mean that it's not um, represent representing a realistic light source. So. I didn't select photo real, so that was probably one of the reasons, but I can start to add a little bit of color. Just picking up the color on the edge here. I think I want to create a little bit more highlight even on the robot itself. Um, it's kind of a squared off brush, which gives it a painterly kind of quality. And it, it does match to some of the other aspects that existed. See these these squared off kind of lighter and darker sections that were in the original image. So I'm just trying to use that a little bit to my advantage. And um, as I've said before, I'm a huge fan of the smudge brush within Sketchbook Pro. I just think it's just super easy to use. And a lot of the other smudges are, are too harsh. So I'm already liking that ad. I'm just gonna erase a little bit more of it. I'm gonna pull back and see where we are. It's a pretty common thing to do is keep pulling back, checking your work, make sure it's the edit is looking good. So I like I like those changes here. I'm gonna zoom into the head for a second. 
because I think this deserves a little bit more attention. So what I was trying to go for here was this hopeful look where the character is kind of looking up into the sky. And I, I did the same kind of brush techniques in this section on the paint layer, but I started with the inking. And for inking, I was using just a standard uh, ballpoint pen, I believe, uh, or probably felt pen. I think felt pen at, um, let's see what it's on, 6.0, that looks about right. So if I zoom in here, something weird is going on with those edits. Oh, I think I'd already painted over that, so I don't need to worry about it. But if I go into ink, oftentimes I'll create an extra layer on top of it. If I'm making a new edit, I'm just gonna pick up the color rather than, you could choose to just always be in a color set. Uh, I don't actually have my color sets open, but uh, it's a pretty common way to work so that you might have your color sets or kind of the, the selected grouping that you have. And this one I've been, because I wasn't starting from scratch, I just wanted to use as much as what existed already in the file. So I would just pick up a color and I think I already have it. And I'm just gonna, you know, this is how I paint a line. Uh, the original image, not the original image, but the stable diffusion image, it has this kind of fuzziness of the edges. It kind of tracks off a little bit and it's, it's not as crisp as the lines that I have. Of course, I could start with a brush that was less crisp, but what I tend to do is, um, let me just merge this down really quickly so it's all part of one ink layer, is you can use the smudge pen to just kind of reduce the line quality a little bit. I had it cranked up too much, so let, me, let me just back it off. And that way you can give it that slight fuzziness so that it's gonna match the others a little bit more. Maybe that was too much. Uh, you kind of have to get in tight to make these kind of edits and I don't go crazy on this I just do it in some places to pull it to be a little different I'm gonna have to fix this whole section here but I do like the way this is working overall with these paint layers I'm gonna back out uh, a little bit of overlap sometimes isn't a bad thing it gives it uh, a nice kind of hand-drawn quality even though we're doing it in a digital fashion but I think I got a little sloppy on this section so I'm gonna erase and where's my eraser? So hard eraser in this in this position. And then just trim it down. And of course, because I'm working on quite a few layers, this is why I merge down a bit because it drives me crazy when I'm searching for a layer. Like I used to work with uh, retouching quite a bit. Uh, many, many years I was a retoucher in New York and in San Francisco. And um, I was once working with one of my retouchers on my team and I said you know I have a problem with layer 49 uh, or I'm, I'm challenged to understand layer 49 or something like that and she said well, I'd really like to know what, what's the problem with layer 49 and I said well the fact that there is a layer 49 because somebody else needs to come into this they don't know what your file means they don't know what your layers mean so it was around that time that I was working with a, a whole team of uh, retouchers and um, got really good about naming my files. Now, these aren't the best because I know I'm the only one who's gonna go back in here, but I still name it edits. I still name it ink. So I'm not confused when I come into the file later on. And this is by no means finished, but I really like now that if I back out a second, I'm just gonna tab off so that we only see the image. Now it has a feeling like, what is this robot looking for? He's looking hopefully up into the sky. Maybe it's relief. Maybe this is, maybe this is a drop ship to come pick him up. And it's really getting closer to the feeling that I was originally trying to intend um, to really tell a story. But anyway, that's more specifically about how I work, especially with the conceptual art brushes within Sketchbook Pro as I'm starting, trying to flesh out detail in an overpaint. All right, thanks so much.